it will be ignorant to say that women do not have a place in ministry. We all know that's not true. If you firmly believe that women must remain quiet, I would really encourage you to do a deeper dive into scripture. What's up? It's Johanna with God is Glamorous, where we learn how to live our best lives through Jesus Christ. And today I want to talk about a very, very controversial topic that has divided a lot of Christians in the church. And that is whether or not women should be able to preach or teach or whether or not they should just be silent. So I am going to break this video down into two parts because I want to examine and study two scriptures. But the first scripture is going to be found in 1 Timothy. So in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 11 through 14, it reads, A woman should learn in quietness and in full submission. I do not permit a woman to teach or to assume authority over a man. She must be quiet. For Adam was formed first, then Eve. And Adam was not the one deceived. It was the woman who was deceived and became a sinner. So let's talk about it. So Paul writes this to Timothy and he says, I do not permit a woman to teach or preach or have authority over a man. She must be quiet. And a lot of women have gotten very offended over this, but I want to break this down in a way that truly honors the scripture and truly puts things in a perspective that we can celebrate. So let's talk about it. So a lot of people refer to 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 11 through 14, when women are preaching or teaching, and they say, the scriptures say that women must be quiet. They absolutely have to be quiet. They cannot teach. They cannot preach. They have no place in ministry. Well, according to scripture, if you look closely, you'll understand that that's completely false. If that was absolutely true, Paul would not mention in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 5, that women can pray and prophesy. So we can see from the scripture alone that women do have a place in ministry. Where Paul writes to Timothy in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 11 through 14, he does not mean that women must remain silent at all costs. He does not mean that women should just completely be silent in church and that they have no place in ministry. That's false because if it was true, Paul would not have written in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 5 that women are able to pray and prophesy. So which one is it? We all know that scripture is God-breathed. We all know that God is not a man that he should lie. And we all know that scripture does not contradict itself. So to say that a woman must be completely silent in the church, that's absolutely false. We've also seen several times in scripture how women have been able to have influence within ministry and how they have even even influence men in a godly way, starting with Esther. Esther influenced a king to save an entire nation of Jews. She came to the king and the king said, Esther, you can have up to half my kingdom. This woman was a woman of influence and influenced a man. Deborah, Deborah was a major influencer and also a judge, the only female judge in the Bible. She was able to influence a man, Barak, to go to war. There are also several women within the New Testament who had incredible influence on men in the Bible. It will be ignorant to say that women do not have a place in ministry. We all know that's not true. If you firmly believe that women must remain quiet or silent in the church, you, I would really encourage you to do a deeper dive into scripture. When Paul is saying that women should be quiet and learn in silence, he does not mean indefinitely. So let's talk about when exactly should women remain quiet. All right, so let's talk about when women should remain quiet. So in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 11 through 14, Paul writes that women should learn in submissiveness and quietness and that they should have no spiritual authority over men. So a lot of women get up in arms about this, like, oh my gosh, why do we need to be quiet and learn in full submissiveness? Well, let me bring this into a new perspective. If you are in church and a man of God who is highly anointed and the shepherd over that church is preaching, guess what? You're learning in full submission and quietness. Paul is not saying that we have to be fully silent at all times in church or within ministry. What Paul is simply saying is that we should honor and respect when a man of God who is fully anointed to lead a church or to pastor a church or to teach a congregation, we should honor that and we should learn in submission and in quietness. And a lot of women get upset like, why should I have to be in full submission and learn in quietness? Well, let me give it to you another way. You do it every Sunday. If you are in church, 
you should be learning in full submission and in full quietness, not in a way where you can't speak, but in a way where you are honoring the man of God who's teaching, where you are not in an aggressive mode, where you are not being contentious. When I go to church, I am learning in full quietness and submission when a man of God is preaching. Not to say that I can't clap and I can't shout. It, where the verse means quietness, it simply means without contention, without quarrel, without uh, pushing back. If you are in a church where you feel as though you cannot fully submit to and honor the man of God who's preaching and pastoring a church, then you should probably find another church. But if you are in a church where you truly respect and honor the man of God and the pastor who's leading that church, then you should be able to learn in submission and in quietness. Again, that quietness is not saying that you should absolutely be quiet every time, but in a way where you are not contentious, where you do not feel that you have to push back on everything that he says. And that's what I believe that Paul is simply trying to convey in these scriptures. Now let's get to another part. Should women be able to preach and teach in the church? Honestly, let me give it to you in two specific answers. Number one, do I believe it's biblical for a woman to be able to preach and teach in church? Yes. However, there's a second half to this. Women should not assume spiritual authority over a man. It is clear as day in scripture. If you are a pastor or a teacher and you are a woman and you are assuming spiritual authority over a man of God, that is not biblical. If you are a woman who's a pastor and you are pastoring grown men, that is not biblical. God has not ordained or assigned women to be spiritual leaders over men. In the same way God did not design women to be spiritual leaders over their husbands, why would he ever expect women to be spiritual leaders over men? Again, it's not to say that women don't have their place in ministry. And again, it's not to say that a woman can't get behind a pulpit and preach the word of God to a congregation of men and women. It's the fact that if she gets behind that pulpit and she teaches and preaches the word of God to men and women, she should understand that number one, she does not have full spiritual authority over these men that she's teaching. And number two, that there is a clear shepherd, that there is a clear man of God who has allowed her to be able to teach and preach the gospel. Oftentimes, a lot of women get offended when people say that our place is to teach women and children. My question to you is, why do you get offended? I don't know about you, but I don't want to teach a man. I don't want to teach a man the scriptures. The moment where we have to feel as though we as women need to step up and teach men about God, that's a very dangerous place to be. The moment where we feel as though we as women need to be able to teach men about the Bible and about God, that's an indicator that there is a severe lack of godly men within the kingdom. We already have a lot to do. The last thing that I wanna do is to be able to teach a man the word of God. Now, now don't get me wrong, I have a lot of male followers and I have a lot of men who have been impacted by my teachings, but I am clear on one thing. Number one, I understand that men are not my audience. Every single time I get on Instagram and speak, I'm speaking to women. If men wanna listen in and chime in, that's their business, they can do that. But I am clear on one thing and that's the fact that God has assigned me to women. Number two, I understand that I do not have spiritual authority over a man. Also, just because women don't have spiritual authority over men doesn't mean that we can't be leaders over men within the workplace. Just because God has not ordained us to teach and preach to men the word of God doesn't mean that we can't hire men, doesn't mean that we can't be managers or bosses or supervisors over men. That's completely different. We can still have influence and lead men, but when it comes to the spiritual organization of things, women, we should not want to lead a man. It's not biblical. It's not our role, and we should respect that. And honestly, we should be grateful for it. <laughs> so based on my experience, when I first started God is Glamorous, I would have prayer calls, I would have Bible studies, and I wanted to be able to include everyone. So every now and then, when a man would get into my prayer calls and my Bible studies, I would let him. But every single time a man answered my prayer calls or my Bible studies, it always ended in disaster. There was always a spirit of lust that crept in. Either a man would try to display himself too much as a way to either position himself as 
someone who is attractive or he would say inappropriate things during Bible study. I don't even have to really study the scriptures to understand that a woman should not be leading a man in ministry. Based on my own experiences, I have seen how things went south when a man entered my ministry. A spirit of lust just always crept in. I remember leading a Bible study and talking about sexual purity and my own experience with sexual purity. And he wrote in the chat to me, I would wait for you. Very, very inappropriate. So I immediately kicked him out of the Zoom and needless to say, he got offended when I kicked him out. And it's like, bro, I don't have time to not only deal with your inappropriate comments nor to have time to argue with you after bible study you know it just gets to a place where it's just not god's design to have women leading men i'm sorry but the next time a man joins my prayer call or bible study trust and believe there's going to be another man of god leading it over me period because it's not god's design it always gets murky and it always ends in disaster i'm sorry but having a man enter a group of women as they're praying and learning about god it sounds very predatorial to me and i've experienced it and i put a stop to it um it, we should always allot that to another man of god so that's what I think about it. Number one, can women teach and preach? Absolutely. But they should understand that they should not have spiritual authority over a man. It is not biblical. Number two, there should be no reason why you should be upset about you being able to learn in quietness and full submission. If you are listening to a pastor or a preacher or an anointed man of God that God has ordained to lead a church, you should have no problem learning in full submission and quietness. Not to say you have to absolutely be quiet, but you should not not be contentious. Number three, it simply means to respect the spiritual order that God has designed. There is nothing wrong with women being assigned to women and children. I have no problem with being assigned to women and children because I don't want to lead a man. And lastly, just because God did not ordain women to be spiritual leaders over men in a church doesn't mean that we can't be leaders within the workplace or whatever other field. As long as we don't have spiritual authority, that's fine. As long as we don't have spiritual authority, we can still go out and lead men and be great managers and great bosses and great CEOs and great leaders but when it comes to the spiritual authority and assignment ladies god did not ordain us to be spiritual leaders over men and i think honestly we should not only respect that but celebrate that because trust me we got a lot of work to do the last thing that we want to do is teach a man how to love god more i don't want to do that i want another godly man to be able to do that for me but that's all i got let me know in the comments what you think i hope that i have been able to debunk this scripture and give you my point of view thanks for watching and i will see you next week stay glamorous